Hi, I'm Alison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings and drawings for beginners and all levels. And today I'm going to show you how to paint a beautiful husky. Now this is the, the reference photo we're going to use. So the reference photo I put on my canvas and I'm going to show you how to transfer this to your canvas so we can get started painting. So what I did was I printed off a copy of the dog, the husky dog on a piece of paper and it's an eight and a half by 11 so my canvas is about nine by 12 so i made it close to what the size of the canvas was and then what i did was i took carbon paper i want to trace it because it's hard to actually draw it on your canvas but you can draw this freehand on another sheet of paper and then transfer it the same way but what i did was to, so I could see it really well, I use carbon paper, okay? Now carbon paper, you can't erase it, so you make mistakes, it's really gonna be hard for you to fix it. But you can paint over these lines, so that's no problem because it's black anyway, black and white. But the lighter parts where it's light around here, I didn't want to put the carbon paper there. So what I used was, I used my own graphite paper. I made this by just taking a plain piece of paper printer paper and putting my pencil all in the back of this and then I use that and I put that in here the same thing I use a pen and I drew I traced the edges that weren't in the black areas and the tongue and the, the important areas so I could erase it if I made them if I made a mistake so you can see they're lighter but I can erase those if something went wrong okay so use uh, both methods and that way you know you won't get yourself in trouble so we'll just take this off. So I only taped it on, that's all. And then I, I use a pen to transfer it because it, you can push hard on the pen. And this is a board, right? It's not one of those stretch canvases because you, if you're pressing hard, you could go through the stretch canvas. You can do it. But these boards, canvas boards are great because they're nice and sturdy, you know. And uh, you can frame them. And the, then I'm going to show you the colors. It's the use. reference photo that I found on Pixabay. And um, as you can see, it's all black and white. Some gray, little, looks like a little bit of burnt umber there in the, in the uh, ears. And um, a little bit of blue in the eyes, pink, reddish color on the tongue. And uh, so we'll get started painting that. I have a video on how to draw the dog the husky dog on my patreon page i do have a time lapse video on here on youtube but if you want the full step-by-step -step drawing of this dog how to shade it what tools to use um lots of information on how to bring this to life then you go to my patreon page and you'll find the it's in two parts uh, they're over an hour, an hour, about an hour each. So, um, yeah. So if you want to go to my Patreon page and, and learn how to draw the dog, then uh, you would. Yeah. So if you want to go to my Patreon page and learn how to draw this dog, uh, just let me know if you have any problems. No, that's not what I want to say. So go to my Patreon page so you can learn how to draw this beautiful dog. If you wanted to, you could have did a background first. Um, I didn't do a background first because I'm not really sure what color I want my background, but I'm just going to work with it as it is. Uh, here we go. Drawing that I did on uh, my Patreon page. So, like I said, it, this is the. It, it can be darker here. Like you can make them darker here. I just uh, finished up as it was, but I'll give you step by step instructions on Patreon how to draw that beautiful dog. Here are the colors I'm going to use. It's not very much uh, because it's only a. Well, I need some burnt sienna. These yeah. are the colors that I need. These are the colors that I'm using. I'm using uh, black and white and red. It can be any color red, any color you have there. And blue, I got ultramarine blue, but you can use whatever you want and a bit of burnt umber, or you can use burnt sienna or any brown. So that's very limited, which is good because there's not a lot of color in the dog. So, so far I just have some small, because it's only a small area. I have some small flat synthetic brushes, chiseled edge. And I have a couple of round brushes, small round brushes, maybe for whiskers or whatever. So I'm just going to um, start with those brushes. So I need more, then I'll let you I'd know. I'd like to start with the black areas first. So the black areas, you need your small flat brush until we get into the, the larger, or the smaller black areas around the eyes. We may need to small, have a smaller brush. 
So we'll just go with putting it black first. Okay, there we go. Good. Good, good, good. Just keep filling in the black. So you got the chisel edge here, which is good because now you can put up against that line and that line, right? So now you got the chisel edge makes a nice sharp line for you, see? So keep going and putting in all the black area. accidentally went into the wrong area with black. <laughs> so what I had to do was clean it off as best I could with a bit of wet tissue. And then I had to let it dry and then I have to paint over it. <laughs> That's okay, we need shadows there anyway, but I didn't want it as black as I did it. So that was an accident. So I'm just showing you that, because um, I can't hide it. <laughs> so, so anyway, we'll continue on with the black. It was supposed to be down here and not up there. We'll continue on. I will do the ears and 
as you can see, I'm pulling out some of these edges here, right? You know, just to get that furry look, as you can see in the picture. I'm using the chisel edge of my brush to do that. So, you know, you can just put it on plain and then we can work on that after. You don't have to do all that right away. You just want to get the black on first and worry about that after. But I want to do the ears. So you want to do the ears. And don't forget to go with the direction of the fur, okay? Because when you're coming down to go out, you need to go with the direction of the fur. And so this fur here is going up this way, okay? So make sure you look at the direction of the fur. And come out over that line a little bit to give it a furry look. See? Like that. So use a chisel edge to do this. If you can. All right. So we have this much done. So keep looking at your reference photo, okay? Keep looking at it because you're gonna need, even though you drew it out, you still need to know, you know, where these little shades of black are going. But we can, this is just getting us started. So as long as we get things in place, then we can work on getting everything the way it really should be. So we'll, it's a little bit down here. See how, like when I made that mistake, so easy to uh, go into the wrong areas. So now we're going to do the eyes. So we'll do the eyes and the snout and all that good stuff. Just gonna make sure I got a good reference photo. I'm trying to pick the best one I have here. Let's see, see so you can see the eyes there now. And I'm gonna take a small round brush this time. And I'm going to take my black. I reload a lot, okay? So when you're doing these, you might do a few strokes and go back and get more paint, okay? So these here go around the eyes. Use a small brush so you can get into the area. The smaller the area, the smaller the brush. The bigger the area, the bigger the brush. All right. So, get around that eye there. I don't want to go into the eye because... Where you're using black paint, it's, it's not that easy to correct it. I'm going to use my phone for the reference photo now because we got color. I forgot about that. No. Whatever works for you. All right. There we go. Oops, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go in there. Oh no, gotta have a steady hand. 
I'll fix it up now when I go back in to lighten that up with the blues and things. So, a little bit over here. Good. The other eye. Keep looking at your reference photo. We're just doing the blacks right now. So I, I can see some burnt sienna and burnt umber and all kinds of things going on there. But uh, right now we can just get the main features painted. The blacks and the whites. Well, blacks, I say, because the whites are going to be shadows. And... All right. We're getting there. Good. And we'll do the little dot in the eye. All right. Good. Now with the same brush, we will do the snout. So we got really black in here. here and we're going to wipe off our brush and just whatever is left on the brush put that around here for now leave a few little well we'll put some highlights on it after so now I got that there, so I know where it goes. I'm just going to take the line that I made, and I'm going to go around that. There we go. There we go, and around. I'm trying to keep a steady hand now. <laughs> Trying to leave some highlights there, even though I could do them after, but it, it'll help me put everything in place properly. So, there we go. Keep reloading when you got to, okay? You don't have enough paint on your brush. It's harder to work with. We'll leave that for now, just like that. I know it doesn't look. Maybe we can put a little bit over here. Not too much. Not sure what I'm going to do either yet. I gotta look closely at what I'm doing and make sure I don't do it wrong. That's not too bad. That's a good start. It's a good start. All right. Now look in the ears. You can see it's kind of a grayish. It looks like burnt umber in the in the very the very darks, doesn't it? Well, let's let's do some burnt umber. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my burnt umber. Not too much. I want to keep it a bit dark, but like not burnt umber is pretty dark, so I want a dark brown. So I'm going to put in some my dark. I'm just using the same brush for now. I'm gonna scrub that in because we need to. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more white because it gets a bit light around the edges here. All right, nice. All right, so we'll just just going by the reference photos. I mean, if you were taking pictures of a husky, they're all different color shades and highlights. But I'm just going by this one for now, and. Uh, And these are the colors that I see. Maybe you'll see something different. So whatever you see, don't worry about what I'm doing. Whatever you see, if you see a different shade of brown or, as long as you got the values okay, you know, like uh, like the dark in the center there and then you lightened up a little bit on the edges here and things like that, just, I'm gonna add more white to my brush so that I can lighten it up, see how I'm lightening up. Now down here is more of a grayish color. In the ears, it seems to be the brown. Okay, I got too much white. 
just go back and put some brown on there. I'm after making a couple of mistakes as I'm trying to teach this. But I want you to know that this is what happens. You, you just have to do it, make mistakes, fix them up best you can. They can be fixed. They can be adjusted. All right, so don't worry about, unless it's a really drastic, I mean, it could, there are times you can have a drastic, but most of the time you can pretty well I'm gonna add some white to my brush so I can spread it out a bit. Okay, and that keeps your paint wet too. So you want because you need you need paint to stay wet so you can blend it. And so see where it's starting to dry that fast, and I'm and no more paint on my brush. See, like that. So just go get more paint and get pick up some white with a little bit of your brownish color because you don't want it to be too white. You want still want that brownish color. To mix them together and see how much white I put lots of paint on. I put lots of paint on my brush as much as I can without you know making it too blobby but these are all the things that you'll get used to as if you're a new artist then you'll get used to how much paint to put on your brush and how it feels. It's just like learning to drive a car when you first learn to drive a car it's so awkward and nothing feels right. Playing piano whatever you're doing for the very first time everything feels weird. But once you get, uh, you do it, the more you do it, then the, the more it comes natural. You know, still hard. <laughs> I've been doing it for many years. It still has a hard time, right? I still, not to, I know how to use the tools. I know how to mix my paint. I know how to do a lot of things. But trying to get it to come together the way I want it sometimes, it's almost impossible. <laughs> to try a few of those. I'm going to use a long liner brush, but you can use a small round brush, whatever you, if you can get, you know, those nice swirly here, there. So this is, I'm going to add white to my brush and it looks like they're kind of got a little bit of blue or something in them. So I'm not sure, but let's see, let's see. I'm going to, it's gray, isn't it? It's more of a gray color. Okay. Well, let's go with the black and white and a little bit of blue. How's that? Black and white and blue. All right. Black and white and blue. Let's see. We want more white than anything, right? So I get a lot of white there. Dragging my brush through it. And a little bit of black. So start with white first. That way you won't have black and then you're trying to add the blues and things to it. And then it just makes a lot of paint, waste of paint, right? So start off with your white. Add a bit of blue, a bit of black, kind of a grayish white. And I'm going to move away from that because it's too blue. And I'm going to add more white, a little more black. I'm going to add it here. I'm kind of mixing my colors, but I'm trying to get the color that I want. So I don't want to keep adding to that one pile because I keep adding that one pile. We'll go on all day and we'll use all the paints. And what well, you got to move away, all right? You got to move away. So if you, you can start here. And again, that start to get that color, but then move over because you just keep adding color to that and it'll be just a waste of paint. So move away and get the color you want. Add a little more white. So if it's not exactly the same, I'm not going to worry too much. But let's see, let's see. Kind of grayish, isn't it? So let's try get some of those nice... So you need a, a, a nice brush that will give you thin lines. You might need to add a bit of water to your paint to get it to move. All right, so try to get it to move by adding water to your brush. It's almost, almost dripping there now, so that may not work, but I'm trying to get a quick strokes if I could get it to do that. I'm gonna get some more paint. Takes a little patience, but lots, lots of water without it dripping. Don't let it drip. But the water also spreads the paint, which means that it might make them too thick. See how they're coming out thick? I'm getting some, but I just want to show you that, you know, it takes, <laughs> takes patience. If I mess it up, I'll just put some more darks back there, okay? 
I'll also try another brush now in a minute. This brush doesn't seem to like me. See? See, I get some nice ones there. See how nice they are, but it won't always work. I'm out of curiosity, I'm just going to try a smaller round brush. All right, Let's see if I can get a smaller round brush to do something for me. Don't think this one's going to work because it's got a big tip on it. So I'll try it anyway just to see. Bad, not bad. Still a bit thick. Not bad. So try different brushes. See if you can find the one that works for you. You might have to practice on a separate sheet of paper or something so you don't want to spoil your painting, right? So anytime you're doing your paintings or you're not sure about something, try it on a different piece of paper. I'm gonna add more white to this. There we go. Now, I just want to get so much done at first. I'm not too worried. I don't like that going in there like that. But um, I'm not too worried what it looks like at this stage. I'd like to get it better. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go with pure white this time. And I'm going to try my thinner brush again. Try uh Try a chiseled edge brush just to see out of curiosity. I want to try different brushes. A very chiseled edge. Still not getting them thin enough. I'll try white. My brush. So what I'm going to do is let that dry and then I'm going to try and get some nice thin lines over that. It's not working. It, it's not bad, you know, um, but I'd rather use a nice long liner brush. I find that works better. So I'm going to take some white and on my brush and I'm going to highlight the ones that I already did with my long liner brush. So like I said, try different brushes, because they don't always cooperate. doesn't have to be exactly the same as the reference photo because you may not be able to do it may not be able to get exactly the same but you know you can get as close to as you want I'm just trying to show you the different techniques you can use okay that's that's okay for now I'm gonna leave that for now and then I'm gonna try the other ear and uh, and then I can because we want to get something started so follow the uh, the direction of the fur and because you want to get something started and then at the end of it all you go back and you redo the areas that need extra work like these areas here okay so use water to help it move you can add a little bit of the grays and the browns, and, or the, ground, uh, the grayish blue color, and then you can highlight it with white. All right? So I might come back in this way. And whatever way you can. Oh. 
some white. So make them swirly, you know, make them swirly. Just keep doing that until you get what you're looking for. And we will come back and make and add white to highlight. I'm going to let them dry and then we'll come back and, and touch up, do touch ups. Okay. So now we are going to, so here I'm going to give it the bluish gray sh um, shadowy color so that we can add our highlights on top of it. So just mix the same colors we did before the uh, black and white and a little bit of blue. So you can use that. Lots of white. Because we don't want it like really, really heavy dark gray. That's probably okay, I don't know. Do you depends on what you what you want yourself. So this part here is pretty bright, okay? So we won't touch that there. But everything else has this dark shadowy color. So we get that done. So in order to, to show light colors, we have to have some kind of a shadowy background. Even if you're trying to paint just white, you need something behind grayish, bluish color in order to bring out that white. Under the eye. So watch your reference photo. Painting along with me is fine, but you really still need to look at that reference photo to help you get it the way you want to, because you might want darker shadows. You know, you don't have to go exactly what I'm doing because you might have your own ideas. And if even if you're a beginner, the thing about being a beginner, which I was, I tried to be doing exactly the same as what I was following or what was in a book or what was on a video. And I get so frustrated because I'm like, how come I can't get it exactly like that? But I realized after a few years of painting that, you know what? I'm just going to use the reference photos as for a reference, reference videos for reference. And that way I can do my own thing. But you, you do know that you're going to need a shadow here. But if you want your shadow darker, you can do that. Or if you want it more gray, you can do that. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Just want you to know, I try to explain it all the time, no matter what you're painting, try not to worry about it being exactly like whoever you're following or whatever you're looking at. If you're looking at a reference photo or... Because I know I went through many frustrations trying to get it exactly the same as what I was looking at the reference photo. Now, it's good to try to get as close as you want to, just for practice. Um, for learning, to be observant, and all that good stuff. But not to the point where you're so frustrated that you don't feel like you're getting good painting just because you didn't get exactly the same as the reference photo. You want to do your own thing. You want to be more original. You know? I'm just got a bit of fur coming out here. Yeah, you, you want to do your own thing. Let's see what we got here. We got some coming out here on the edges too. So we'll need some shadow there to bring out some of these. He's got fur on the edges here. I don't know if it's a male or female, but we'll say, you notice when you don't know some, some an animal or it's a, a male or female, it's like you just automatically say he. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it, it makes it easier. Than going he or she, you just have to communicate what you can. All right, so that's that area here. That's that's kind of dark, so I might add a little more burnt 
cucumber to that a little black. Like that and that. This should come together with the black. I don't know why I did it that way. It looks like it needs to come together here like that. I missed it. I think I did. I'm just trying to look at my reference folder and make sure I'm doing this correctly. All right. When you bring these little lines out at the end, see how it looks like fur when you do that? I'm just using chisel edge, my flat brush, to get that little bit of fur going on there. Now, I went from light to dark, so my brush, it's okay for my brush to be dirty, all right? So down here, we got more stone. I'll clean my brush really good this time, because I put black on. I change brushes, or you can just clean it. And I want to put some more shadow down here. your shadows on you put the shadows on see shadow shadow there we go good now this is going to be shadow too but a bit lighter I think try the tongue so the tongue is kind of a red Got a little bit of blue added to it. I'm just going to see if I can come up with that color. Maybe a little bit of blue, kind of is it kind of purplish like that. Let's see. Let's put that on anyway. Well, that's nice. That matches it pretty good, doesn't it? So it's red, a little bit of blue. Darken your blue red up a little bit, okay? All right, let's do that. Using a round brush, but a flat brush would be better. Try around, all right? Like I, I keep saying, try different brushes. Try different brushes, but I like this kind of where it goes around that tongue, so try not to go outside that tongue, so I can put up. The round brush might be a little tricky, so just try to get that to go around that tongue. And if you're nervous about it, just put a bit of tape around it, something to tape it off so you don't go over into the other area. And if you do go over to the other area, we can paint over it again with some shadow color. We're trying to make it so that we don't have a lot of extra work to do. So the less mistakes, or I don't know what you want to call them, not mistakes, but little hazards. <laughs> then the better because you can get through your painting faster without being, because you make all these little tiny things, it gets annoying after a while, you know, just simple things like going outside the line and and then you gotta go back over it again. See, when you're painting, you're anxious to get it done. You wanna see what it's gonna look like. If it gets too frustrating, take a break. Come back to it when you're refreshed. I do sometimes. You know. There we go. We're getting there. As I'm doing this, I notice the dark. I need to put black in those corners there. I would suggest that you sit down and do this. I'm standing and it's a little harder. So I would suggest that you sit down at a table, your painting table and do this. Because there's a lot of tiny, like when I'm doing landscapes, it's just tap, 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 tap. But when you're doing something like this, it's very tedious. You have to be very careful, have a steady hand
Okay, there we go. <laughs> Stop licking your tongue out at me. He's a rude dog, isn't he? A rude dog. So I'm going to take a small round brush and get those little corners that I noticed that need to be done. Small round. All right, so the smaller the area, the smaller the brush. So get your black, put it at the tip of your brush so you don't have too much paint. So because these are very tiny areas, you don't want a big blob of paint. You want to be able to work with a little bit of paint. There we go. Now that goes right up around that little edge there. So let's be, let's try it. See if we can do this without getting in trouble. Not bad. So like I said, sit down and do this because it'd be much easier for you. So I made a little bit of a mess there. I don't want to go around that corner too much. Um, I'll see after what I'm going to do with it. If you're not sure about something, leave it till a little later in your painting. Okay, I made up a little. I made a little mess here, so I'll fix it up when I when I do the shadows again. <laughs> a little bit of a mess there. All right, let's see what we can do. So I want to do another shadow color on the nose around this area. I'll do it a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. I'm just adding a tiny bit of blue to my white. And so that's lighter than, than the rest there, right? But we got to have something there. You see, I'm, I'm going into the black a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. All right. Down around here starts to get darker. Add a little bit of my black so that I can darken it up down here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Maybe I'll just add a shadow. Okay, we get a little darker down here. There we go, and there was a little, I'm gonna use a bit of burnt umber with some white. There was a little piece down here, underneath that there, that was, I, I think I lost it a bit, but I'm gonna put a little bit of brown here, just for now. And then it looks like I'm going to need to put black on my brush. So clean off your brush and put some black on the chiseled edge chiseled edge so that you can get here above the tongue kind of like a shadow there just touch it if you have to okay that's better not bad all right good now we're going to add some fur make a furry looking so i'm just going to go with burnt umber and white, a little bit of blue. I'll show you now how I mix that. So all I did was I got my burnt umber, put that down first. Okay, so I put burnt umber and then I said a little bit of blue or a little bit of white and then white. Okay, so I get a nice, I try to, you know, decide what color I want. Looking at the reference photo, was, you might need a little bit more burnt umber. You know, so just adjust it as best you can. And then just take your chiseled edge and start pulling out some of these nice furry. So 
so you get nice fur coming out here. Get that much done. Comes back up this way a little bit. So use the chiseled edge. Pick up more paint. Chisel your brush by pulling your brush through the paint to get a chiseled edge like that. Nice skinny edge like that. And then you can use that to pull out the fur. Good. I'm going to add a little bit of black and white to make kind of a grayish color. Because it looks like it's kind of gray plus, plus the burnt sienna. Make sure you get a nice chiseled edge. Try to get your chiseled edge. Keep going back and forth uh, on your palette to get that chiseled edge, all right? We're trying to get that nice furry look. There we go. I know it looks funny now, but you know, this is what you got to do in order to get To get the furry look now we you have to go over it maybe several times in order to get it to look right chiseled edge chiseled edge go back and get some more paint doesn't matter if the colors are exactly the same they can be more blue at one point they can be more whitish they could be more have a bit of burnt umber in them a bit of black but make sure the white is what's gonna you know bring the the values up okay we keep doing this chiseled edge and that will help look like fur you still have to go back and forth in your palette to get that chiseled edge because as you're doing this, it's going to flatten out on you when you're, you know, at some point. So there we go. See it? And you can see how the lines start to uh, thicken up. So that's when you need to go back in and get your chiseled edge again. So that's all you do is get that furry look first we'll worry about you know once you start highlighting and adding more I gotta go this way because I'm standing up and I'm So you can pull out or you can pull back in. Like I said, where I'm standing up, I gotta try and compensate for the the way I'm standing and the loss of control. You can't control it as well when you're standing up. So I would suggest you sit down. There we go.
So all we're doing right now is just trying to put it together. All right, I know it's hard and but at least you can look at this and attempt it or just do it your own way or whatever you think, you know, just follow along and try to have some fun with it. Hopefully it's not too frustrating for you. This over here, that's the way the picture is, okay? This is the way the picture is. It looks weird, but that's the way it is uh, in the reference photo. But you have to put a background on it, see? The background on the picture is actually white, right? You know? See? So let's continue on and layer, 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 layer. So just add a little bit more white to my paint, those colors I was talking about. And I'm just kind of adding a little more, a couple of layers to thicken it up a bit more. Like I said, whenever you're lay whenever you're painting, layering your paint, layering colors, it gives it a nice thick, I don't know, a heavy look, you know, like it's more finished look, I guess. Now if your chisel edges, you can also try a thin tip brush, right? See how much better that is on that side there. I'm not going to worry about my black there because I'm going to. Just want to get a furry look. That's better. I'm going to do this here. I'm adding white to what I already did. And I'm just layering on top of what I did. But I don't try not to cover up everything that you did already. Try to keep some of that. Do some touch-ups as you go along, you know. See? Now, we might have to go in and out of that a few times. Well, I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get this done. So we just do the, we do the fur. See how it looks more furry the more layers you put on there? I'm just short, I'm using short strokes, chiseled edge, short strokes, try to get that nice furry look. And my brush, don't want to keep the chiseled edge, maybe I'm pushing too hard. Short strokes. But see how it's, that extra layer gives it a really nice, thicker look. There has to be a better word than that. <laughs> I'm just going back in and adding white to my brush, okay? To my dirty brush. I want it a bit lighter than what I already have there just to, to see if the fur is coming out nicely. You can go out and in. You can come up. Whatever works. Constantly going back and forth to get some paint and to chisel, chisel your brush. 
Do a little bit of curvy look to it. Nice and furry looking there now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more burnt umber and a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna go over it again. Get some shadows in, because it might lighten it up too much, but look at that. See how you get that extra, see? Just keep layering, layering, and layering. There's a little birdie outside my window. Trying to join in on the conversation. Right, so just take some burnt umber and just put it here and a little bit of blue. Mix them together. You can add white if you want to, or you can wait till you get that done. Get some more shadows in there. Right, see? So you can go back and forth with the colors, right? And that will give you. Try to get that edge nice there. I like this up here. I should leave that alone. <laughs> you see something you like, leave it alone. Kind of make short strokes and then I'm moving down, separating from the top ones there. There we go. Now, more shadows and I'm going to layer it again with some lighter ones again so it's a process of back and forth all right and I'm going into the black on purpose that gives it um, and you might say well, why don't you just put on the dark first then the light I, I put some dark on, it wasn't dark, you know, I mean, that's there too. You can see the blues and the grays and the browns and, you know, so. It's almost too blue, isn't it? I had a little bit too much blue that time. Sorry. Blue is all right though. Look at that, my shadowy colors. See how nice that is here? So, you know, it's coming along. It takes a few of these uh, back and forth colors. I want it more shadow. If you're happy, if you do two or three layers and you're happy with it, you don't have to continue. Um, I just want to experiment right now to see, make sure I'm getting enough, enough shadows and things going on there. I want it. There we go. And then I'm going to layer. Again, I'm going to layer. So I'm going to layer probably, I don't know, you could do six or seven layers, eight. Yeah, you know, I don't think any more than four or five is not, should be enough, but it was not. Just continue and keep make, doing layers. Try not to cover everything up underneath. Some background noise here, which is kind of nice. It's like nature, isn't it? Dogs barking, birds chirping, cars going by. Peaceful. It's peaceful. Now, I'm going to go back to the white. I'm not going to clean my brush. Just going to add white to my brush, chisel it out. And go over that again without destroying everything, all right? I'm trying to get the lay of the, the fur, the way the fur is going, the uh, direction of the fur. Kind of like to make it a little curvy, you know, like little curves. A 
we go. Good. That wore white again. white again. Chisel your edge of your brush. You know this is a good uh, it's a good uh, exercise for long fur. That way if, once you get happy with the way you got the fur done then you can do any dog with long fur really. And you might even come up with your own technique. See how I'm just shortening, I'm doing some short furs and then I, I drop down and see I just separate them. I don't want to do, like I'll find these here, should have been probably, oops, I don't want that. Don't want that. It should be like some up here and then some down here. I'll come back to that one, I messed it up. Okay, so let's go with this. So short and then some long, uh, underneath it when you get it done. That makes it more look furry it's rather than the big long lines like that. A couple of short ones and then drop down. Kind of overlap them. Happy little dog. The happy little dog. Find that too straight over, but that's the way it looks in the picture, though. Hmm. Not sure. There we go. Well, anyway, we'll just leave it at that for now. And then, that edge there. And I'm going to go into my black. So I'm cleaning my brush off. I've got some black. All right, so I'm chiseling the edge again. And what I'm doing is, I'm going to bring some of that black to make it look furry. Bring it up here like this. Blacker. Pull up some fur here like that. And then we go in here. Here. One thing at a time. I'm getting too far ahead of myself here now. Chisel edge, pull out. Okay, so black. I know it's not exactly the same as the reference photo, but in order to make it look furry, you gotta kind of bring the black into the other fur. chiseled edge. See how they, they go together and that way it makes it look like the fur is all, you know, you see animal fur, I mean they're all mixed in. And Reload all the time.
reload and we go back and forth. Get some up here. All right, so make sure you reload and then you gotta go out here. Bit of work. It's a bit of work. Oops, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be like that. Uh, well, if I need to fix it, I'll fix it. I'm just going to clean it up there. Come on over here and see if I can... I know it's not exactly the same as the reference color because it's a photograph. We're doing a painting. So we can do it whatever way we want. Whatever it looks... Painting might look completely different than a, a reference photo. By the time you get the colors on, they don't look exactly the same. Just use the corner of the brush for the small areas. Cool. Now, let's do the bottom here. Okay, that don't go in there. The white goes into the black. Okay, so I won't do that. I'll leave that alone and I'll put some more. I'll put some more of those back in. So here, here we can drag a few in, if you want to. Just a little bit, don't have to be a lot, but just enough to make it look furry. That's how you get that furry look. See all these little strokes and these little pointy edges? See those edges there, like see how, right? Times I don't even look at the reference photo because I want to I want to I want to do it so what I think might look nice but sometimes your brush won't do what you want it to do so it's not always you it's sometimes your brush don't you got in your mind what you want to do and then you take your brush and this is what happens you can't get it to do what you look see and well it's all because I'm standing up but uh, I'm just gonna that's cute. Not wrong with that, sure. I'll add a few more strokes here. That little bit of fur there looks nice. Brings out the other one. Um, and over here, maybe, and here, maybe. Because I think it looks better when you got a little extra. Shadows going on there, right? It's nice. Now I'm gonna pick up some blue on my on my dirty brush and some white. Some blue and some white. Get that color there. I'm just gonna go back into the fur here, and that will give it some nice highlights. All right, so. If it's too light, go back in with more black. Add more black. Just gonna layer, layer, layer. Layer, layer, layer. If you don't
don't want the blue, you don't have to. But it kind of gives a nice little shine to it, you know? It kind of, when you, whenever you use black, if you draw, if you're painting black dogs, black fur, uh, you can add this blue on top of the black and you'll get that nice, it's, it's almost like the black has a, has a, sh a shimmer to it, you know? If you do too much blue, all you gotta do is add more black. Probably go back in with some black there because I got a lot of it there. Oh, this here. It's too much. I know, guys. I didn't have a chiseled edge enough. So I'm just going to go in pure black. So you go back and forth, fix it up. All right. And some of that blue over here. See, I'm making short strokes and I'm skipping over some. Hard to see that on the reference photo, but if you've seen a dog in real life, you see that the fur is all, you know. I'm gonna clean off my brush, go back into pure black. I just go add a little bit of black in between those. Just so it won't be too much. Pure black. I might want to wait for it to dry or you can keep working while everything's wet. You're working. You're working on a painting. It takes a lot of work. And that's why you need to if you're selling them, you need to get your time, your materials. You know, look how furry that is. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. So now I'm going to, what am I going to do? Let's see. I'm gonna add white to my small round brush. At the tip here. See if I can make some nice little bits of fur going up here. Went into the black. A little bit more here. Just putting white on the very tip of my brush. I try to get these little bits of white in here to get a kind of a furry look. didn't blend them in at all. I'm just getting these little blobs of white. <laughs> Let them stick out. See what that looks like. If I don't like it at the end, I'll just go over it. But I kind of like it. So 
so far. Like I say, your brush, if your brush would just do what you want it to do, it would be so much easier. I do watch videos of other artists doing these and their brush just seems to work beautiful in it. And it's like, it's an old scruffy old brush that they got and, and it just works out perfect. Blows me away. <laughs> That's cute, isn't it? All right, we got some over here and we got some over here. Kind of tapping at it a little bit and trying to get the, up into that black fur there. Yeah, tap at it, see if that works. Tap, 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 get pull up a little bit into the fur there. Try to go with the uh, I think what I need is a better brush. Let's see what I got here. I got tons and tons of brushes. Just can never seem to find the one I want to use. I have to try many brushes. And longer, a longer liner brush here now. That seems to be working a bit better. Try different brushes. I thought you were happy. I thought you were a happy little fella. Maybe you don't like the way I got your eyes done. I'm always reloading. That seems, it seems like there's a shadow under here. So I'm gonna have to Sure, but we'll see. Burnt umber would be nice, I think. Brownish color probably will be much better. Brown and white. See if that works out better. be good. A bit more white, so it won't be too dark. Kind of more of a grayish color, isn't it? 
make a grayish color and add some white to it. Let's see if that works. We got some little bits of hair going here, a little bits of uh, Add some white to that. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> That's hard. That's okay. Just look at it as having fun, no matter what comes out like. Just have a bit of fun with it. and Because it's only a practice at first, and the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. I'm looking at my reference photo here, just trying to see what, what way the eyes are here. Yeah. It's coming to life. I'm going to uh, clean up my brush there. Now I'm going to put black on, pure black on it to see if I can get this eye here. This nice little bit of furry look by adding a few little pieces coming out like that. And coming around that corner. Pull out to get that furry look. Pull up into the fur. There we go, it's better. And then we'll add some those bluish highlights. Bring it out a little bit. Good, and we'll do the other eye. some fur like that, just big little streaks like that. My brush just wanted to do something on its own that time. <laughs> Be good brush. down here. And I'm going to get some of that blue, bluish grayish color, a little bit of white to it. It's not blue enough. All right. It's just to highlight it a bit to make it look furry. Maybe a little bit lighter. Blue and white. And a dirty brush, that way you can pick up some of that bit of black and stuff that's there. Tiny little strokes. Tiny little strokes. too much. I'll go right back into my black. Just wipe off the brush a little bit and add some black. Like I said, it's back and forth, right? Back and forth. Now, i got to clean my brush really good because i got to fix that eye that I messed up there. So either get another brush or clean off that one really good. Pick up some white. Let's get that fixed up. Make it look 
nice and round. There we go. Add more white here, just to brighten it up. Good. And now the, the eyes are blue, so we'll add blue to our brush and white to get a really light blue. And then we're gonna add that here. It's too light, so we're gonna need more blue. Now the paint is still wet here, so that's good because when you put your blue on, the white will blend in with the white, blue. The white blue will blend and you get that really pretty bluish color. Nice. I'm going to add a little more blue and darken it a little darker up here. Leave the bottom a lighter blue. That will bring that out more then. See? See? I know it's not the reference photo, but it'll be nice. See how it brings it out more? Good. Now, let's play around with the tongue for a minute. So the tongue has a, a black line there, doesn't it? So I've got a chiseled edge brush. I'm just going to make sure. All right, so centered nose matches up with the center of the nose. And come down come down until it fades out on the bottom here it comes down about let's see let's see the edge of that fur look look where the fur is where the fur ends and it's softening up there there we go that and then it has kind of um i'm going to add some black to my blue and uh seems to oh that's not good let's go with um what about if let's see uh black and wipe off your brush and then Scrub that on there, but I don't not sure if I like that or not. Because it's really dark in here because of the shadow. A little bit of shadow down here. Shade it. I'm just kind of don't have much paint on my brush. I just trying to experiment now on what look nice. Not sure. So that's the shadow, but I want to get it more, I want to get that pink, kind of a pinkish, purplish color, wasn't it, the tongue? So we got blue. Let's try some blue and some red. That looks all right there. That looks, that's the color it is, isn't it? No, it's not. Buy more red, a bit of white. Oh yeah, clean off my brush, I got too much blue on it. Okay, now, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna pick up this one here and lay it over here. And I'm gonna add some white to it. And I'm gonna brighten up that tongue a little bit. Maybe not too bright. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Let's get that edge here. moving it around that shadow that I made. Now, if you can find an easier way to do it, you go right ahead. But I think I just lost the tongue. I'm just gonna go over that because I don't like, kind of rather that color tongue. I'll put shadows back in after. 
Sorry, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. But I'm kind of, like, I never practice this. I'm kind of doing it, uh, you know, and I have to make decisions while I'm filming it. Some people will paint it first and then do the video. But it would take many days to do that. And which is fine. But uh, I have a, a lot of videos that I have to put up before going on a little holiday, so, you know. But I don't I don't wanna take days doing one painting. I find that if I'm doing a painting in front of you and I'm s struggling myself, you can see, right? Because if you look at videos and you think, how come I can't, how come they're doing it so fast? How come they're doing it so good? I don't want, I'd rather for you to see what I'm doing and know that, you know, we all struggle no matter how much experience you have, right? that I'll clean off my brush put a bit of shadow up here put it back I add a little bit of black to my brush my dirty brush and I wiped it off so that I don't have as much paint and now all the paint is wet so now you can blend it a bit right like that and then up under here get a little more black but Wipe off your brush because you don't want it to be too much. Just wipe off your brush, kind of have like a dry brush effect. And while the paint's all wet, you can blend it, see? And now I'm going to fix up that center part, make it a little more darker right here. So you can see it. Fix that line underneath the lip there. And um, we'll do a little highlighting. So I'm going to add some white to that pink color I made. So it's lots of white. And just a little bit of a highlight on the edge here to bring that out. A little bit of highlight here. Maybe a little more. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, it's a struggle. Here we go. I just added a bit more white and red to get more of a pinkish color on the edges here. So you can see the edges are nice and bright, right? That's better. That's better. That separates it from that little edge here separates it from that dark inside there this here is too bright there we go there we go now if you want to if you feel like you need to get more shadow in here just add a little more black to your brush and put it in there That's nice. I think that's good. I'm gonna, now we got the snout. We have the snout. All right, the snout is black. And we will go with the black and we will touch up the edges here, make sure it's so I kind of messed that up there, so I'm going to fix that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add white to my black, make it gray, light gray. A light gray. So just add white to your black dirty brush and see. And that will go up here.
there, around there. Clean off your brush. Go back into black and finish up, clean up this edge here. Just go in there and smooth that out. Just come on up here. A little bit of Put that together like that, and you get that little shine on the nose there, see? So you do it again. Good, and then you can go back in with some black. Move it all in together. Come down the center a little bit to give it a bit of a shape. That looks better. I'm fussy about that there though. I'll put some black on that. I'm using the corner of my brush right now to get these little parts here. Let's see if I get that black to show up right here. Picture see they're really dark, so I'm just gonna just tapping away at it so I can see what I can come up with. Nice and dark down there, see, and then you can take the cornier brush, a little bit of white on it, and give it that little bit of a a little bit of that so that you can see where the nostrils are. Now you can see where the nostrils are. A little bit, you know, tedious work. I don't call it work, I enjoy it. But if I was doing this I could probably do this over a day or two, you know, just I take breaks and things like that. But right now I'm constantly working at it so I can get it done for you before I before I run out of time to go to my little holiday. That's okay, that looks good. Now all we gotta do now is you can still I gotta fix the ears up. This face, what can we do with that? I mean it's pretty white. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, what I'm thinking, so I'm going to take a really light blue on my chisel edge brush, and I'm just going to try to get some shading in here. Gotta have some kind of shading in there. Can't be pure white, even though it's pure white in the picture. But in order to uh, to look like fur, you gotta put something there, blue or gray. Cute as that little little purple nose. All right, let's try um, adding some fur. I'm just going to take a long liner brush. See if I can add some fur. There we go. Keep reloading. I think 
we're getting to the end. I mean, yeah, you can keep adding layers of fur if you want. I'm gonna, I think I've shown you enough that you can probably get started on it anyway. It's a long video. I might do it in parts. There we go. Probably a chiseled edge brush might give you better results. Try different brushes. Try to make sure you try to get the fur to, you know, go in different directions or follow the direction of the way the fur looks that you think it would look. All right. There we go. Bits of fur standing up too. I don't I think I'll leave that. Gives it more of a realistic look, doesn't it? Kind of nice, isn't it? I got a furry look to it. Let's see, if we can do something with. I think I got the eyes okay. I think, I think. Let's see, if we can get a little more. There we go. Layer, layer, layer. Because your first couple of layers are going to look really weird, right? And then when you start layering, you'll see that things start to come together. Please don't try to make it exactly the same as mine or the reference photo. Just try to get the fur. Fur is the most important thing in the eyes, the snout and tongue, right? But don't worry about to practice your fur. Look at that. That's better. That's much better than what I had before because the first layer is going to look weird. It's just your base coat. It's like when you're building a house or something. You put the foundation down and then you start adding your layers of wood and whatever else you need to use. But, you know, you have to have a structure. Go. Add some water if you got to. To get it to move more. Now when you're sitting down, you can keep going like that. You're probably right-handed. Some of you guys are probably right-handed, so you might end up doing the opposite what I'm doing. But as long as you get that fur onto these little strokes, you'll be fine. You know, you might want to go out instead of in. So, I keep saying I'm going to sit down and do paintings. So I find it, I don't know, I like standing up. It's just I'm on the side and I, you know, it's hard to get. Sometimes one side looks better than the other when I paint. <laughs> Sometimes. I should look at the reference photo, see what way the fur is. There 
There we go. Layer, layer, layer. Don't be afraid to go into the black because like I said, on dogs, their fur all intermingles with each other, right? These little furry things. To the world, you want to add some extras. See, it's a little bit different than the reference photo, isn't it? That's okay. I don't mind. I'm having fun. And you have fun when you feel you're in control. If your brush is controlling you, your paint is controlling you, then you feel like you're struggling and you're not having a good time, okay? So you have got to take control and not worry about it being perfect, not worrying about just, you're trying to paint fur, try to make it look like fur. Doesn't matter if the colors are exactly the same as a reference photo or anything, just as long as it looks like fur best way you can all right using the right brushes and all that stuff so. now I can't stop see 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 what's happening I'm having too much fun that's why I end up overdoing it that's nice here This little guy has uh, he has whiskers too, right? I should stop, you know. Maybe I'll do the edges here a little bit. <laughs> oh my! I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah, that's nice. Brightening up those edges, isn't that nice? I think we're okay. I know. I should leave it alone. I guess. Lots of stuff there. I should leave it alone. I know I could do lots more. You know. There's some little. It's cute. I think it's different. I know it's different, but I think it's cute. Just a few highlights or something. Bring out that fur a little bit more. Because I should stop. I know I'm. I know. Look how nice that fur came out though. Look at it, it's so soft and so nice. Those little highlights bring it out more, look. I think I'll stop now, even though I like to keep going, but I know you guys must be anxious to uh, have the video over with so you can get started. But you can stop any time and start, you know what I mean? Like you can stop and and go and go back to it. Let's see what else I got to do. I think that's it. I think that's it. I really think that's it. little highlight there. <laughs> I should 
leave it alone, I guess. bit of blackness in there. Clean that up here. So go back and look at anything that you think needs a little extra spend as much time on it as you want if you're having fun just keep doing it but look how nice that that fur blended together isn't that nice do the same over there but i'm not going to continue going on because if i don't end it you're never going to get started so i'm looking at it to see what else i need i think that's it you can do a nice background you know nice blue or light blue background or something i you know whatever kind of background you want or you can leave it white Probably add a little sky or something. This this has some green on top, which is kind of nice. You know? I'm going to send you the reference photo. And, or I'm going to tell you where you can get it anyway. And I think that's it. I think that's it. You know? Put a few bits of weight over that. That's too much there. So you'll notice things as you're going along. You'll notice, oh, that needs a little bit of this. That needs a little bit of that. And you'll... It's nothing wrong with that, you know. That's what you're doing. You're you're observing. The more observing that you do, the more you'll see things, and then you'll be able to fix them up. Once you're happy with it, leave it alone, because you could you could do something that will destroy it completely. I thought there was something else I want to do, but I can't see. I think I'm done. I could bring that down more here a little bit. So I would say. So that's it. I think we, you know, you can learn how to do fur and how to paint a husky dog. It's, uh, it's nice. Lots of fur. All right. So I hope you learned a lot today and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will be seeing you in the next video. So goodbye for now from Alison Pryor. So that's the drawing and that's the painting. I like it. I hope you do.